Girl Scouts, I am so excited for you to join us for our USA Girl Scouts Overseas Cookie Rally. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to help kick off our 2022 cookie season. And we have a very special guest joining us right now for our cookie rally. Everyone, please give a big welcome to Winter Vanecki. <laughs> oh my gosh, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Winter. Thank You're you, excited to be here. I'm so, so excited. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I heard you are an amazing athlete. I actually met you back in 2014, which is crazy. You were speaking about Team Winter, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit later. But um, I also heard maybe you are hoping to be the first winter at the, at the Winter Olympics. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I'm from a small town in Northern Michigan originally, Gaylord, Michigan. Grew up doing all kinds of different sports. I was a runner, a triathlete, and then um, a ski racer. And so did all those sports for several years and then got into the crazy sport of aerial skiing. So now have been competing in aerial skiing over the last numerous years and um, have been on the US ski team for at least five years now and am now headed to Beijing shortly and hoping to be the first winter in the Winter Olympics. So I've officially qualified for the team as of just recently in the last couple of weeks and I'm looking forward to getting over to Beijing and in just a little little bit of time now here. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Well, we cannot wait to watch you compete. That would be so exciting. We'll all have to get, we are very familiar with time zone differences. So we'll we'll be all set to watch you compete over in Beijing. It'll be very exciting. Um, so you are only 23 years old. You've accomplished so, so much. I have to rattle off your your list of amazing accomplishments. So here we go, got my, got my notes out, let's go, here we go. So you ran your first 5K when you were only five years old. You achieved two world records by the time you were 15. You were named to the US ski team when you were 18. Correct me if anything's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> and you recently graduated magna cum laude from the University of Utah. What? That's insane. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Congrats. So how did you accomplish all of that? What's your secret to so much success and, and, and really just pushing yourself to achieve so much? It's tough to say one secret. I mean, obviously I had some amazing parents and my mom and dad always encouraged me to try new things from a young age. So I think that's really important is to not be afraid to go after things that may seem a little crazy or weird or different. You know, we all have different passions in life. I chose a lot of the different sports and aerial skiing and things like that. But then I have three brothers who are all into different things. You know, I have a brother who was a pilot and computer programmer. One's into like finance and loves working out. And um, then I have another who's into aerospace engineering. And so we all have our own unique passions that our parents really encourage us to pursue. And, you know, even though I was a girl, my mom especially always taught me that girls can do anything boys can do sometimes mo in most of the time even better and so i was always just out there encouraged to try new things and to dream big and work hard for those things my grandparents are farmers and grew up um growing up i always saw how much of a work ethic they had and my grandpa always says you know you have a goal and you need to work towards that goal and so i always just dreamed big and then kept working towards those things and didn't let, you know, age, gender, all these things be barriers and, you know, had amazing village of supporters to help me get to where I am. That's incredible. I, um, actually my first, my next two questions have exactly to do with that. But speaking of farm, I'm actually on my grandparents' farm right now. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so did you uh, did you encounter any obstacles along the way and what advice would you give to girl scouts that are um who might feel they're not being taken seriously because of their age absolutely i mean even when i was nine years old i had the dream and the goal of doing an olympic distance triathlon and this was a race that a lot of people were telling me you know wait till you're older you're never going to finish but i finished and i beat a lot of the adults in it. And then I had the goal of running a marathon on all seven continents. And this again was something many said I shouldn't go after, I wouldn't be able to do it. And I ended up setting the world record, becoming the, the youngest person in the world to run a marathon on all seven continents before turning 15. 
And it's kind of funny because I originally found this record in a Guinness Book of World Records. And then I beat the world record. I had accomplished it. We submitted it to Guinness and they actually denied it because they thought it was unsafe and I was too young and they didn't want me going after or encouraging other kids to go after running and things like that. And so that was just another one of the obstacles. You know, I still set the world record. Guinness just picks which ones, but that was kind of funny after the fact. Um, and so there was a lot of naysayers and a lot of doubters and people who said, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it. And a lot of the races with the marathons, it was harder getting into the races than actually finishing them because I was so young. So it was hard to find race directors who believed in me and would let me run their races. And so I think the biggest lesson with a lot of it was to just surround yourself with people who believe in you and a good support system, because there's always going to be those naysayers and those doubters and people who tell you that you can't do it. And so for those times where even maybe I doubt myself a little bit, I know I have my mom, my brothers, my family, my friends who are right there um, pushing me to be my best. And honestly, look where you are now. It's, in, it's incredible. I, I was on your website. Everyone go check out Winter Vinicky's website. Um, and on your website, I saw old footage of you running marathons and doing triathlons. I was like, this is incredible. So I bet it must be such a proud moment to look back and, and see all that. that. That's so cool. Um, okay, so we love how you use your superpowers for good. So I'm curious if you can tell us a little bit more about Team Winter. Um, how does it feel to have such a huge impact on an issue that is so close to your heart? It's pretty neat to be able to not only be out there doing these things for myself, but also for a cause, knowing that I'm helping others. And this all kind of started back even a little bit before Team Winter. So I had this idea of forming sort of a team to be able to help others with my athletics. And so I originally actually wanted to start Team Winter for childhood obesity because I hated seeing the kids getting picked on in school and things like that. And so wanted to have this team that people could be a part of no matter where they are in the US, they could come together at different running races and triathlons to be a part of something that wasn't just for themselves, but for a cause. And so we actually were going to form Team Winter for this. And then my dad was diagnosed on his 40th birthday when I was nine with a rare and aggressive form of prostate cancer. And the day he was diagnosed, I knew I wanted to switch the focus a little bit for Team Winter. And so ended up forming Team Winter for prostate cancer research and awareness and was able to get athletes young and old around the world to start racing for Team Winter to help get the blue ribbon out there. And that was one of the crazy things when we first started Team Winter is there was no awareness for prostate cancer. The men didn't want to talk about it. So a nine-year-old girl was going to talk about it for them. And so we wanted to get more blue ribbons out there because at the time prostate cancer was more common than breast cancer. And we would find tons of pink ribbons in stores, but you know, we'd never would find any blue ribbons. My brothers and I would go looking, we couldn't. And so we wanted to get some out there. So did like a whole Team Winter clothing line for triathlons and running. And then um, a lot of our money that we raised, which to date is over a half a million dollars, went to the Prostate Cancer Foundation. And this money went to develop new drugs to treat aggressive forms of prostate cancer, like the kind my dad had. And it went to go fund new young researchers. And so it's pretty cool to be able to see that all the work I went and the, all the work that I did actually was making a, a physical and real impact. And it was, it's really neat to be able to, especially when I was out there racing and I was at Iron Kids Ambassador for several series, which for several years, which was a youth triathlon series. And I got to, you know, encourage other kids to race for a cause. And a lot of the times I would get letters back from people who I had sent first place trophies to um, who were affected by prostate cancer. And I'd get these letters back of, you know, how meaningful it was for them to know that someone was out there fighting for them, which was, was really heartwarming. And, you know, I ended up losing my dad to prostate cancer. He only lived 10 months after the time he was diagnosed, but it's pretty cool to be able to know that I can, you know, maybe help others. So other families don't have to go through what my family had to go through. Oh my gosh. I, I am so sure that your dad is, is honestly so proud of you and your whole family. It's, um, I recently lost my grandmother, um, so I understand what you're you went through, and it's uh, I I definitely know that everything that you're doing is making a huge impact, and it's it's amazing to see such um, 
action come from uh, your heart, to be very honest. Yeah, it's great. Um, what advice would you give to Girl Scouts that want to make a huge difference in the world just like you did and are continuing to do? I think the biggest thing is just to dream big and be willing to work hard for it, you know, and along the way, help others and be kind to others because you never know what other people are going through or what their story is. We all have our own stories. And at the end of the day, we just need to support each other and encourage each other. That's amazing. Girl Scouts, listen to winter. That's amazing. Um, okay. Okay. So you are going to be competing in aerial skiing at Beijing 2022. Okay, the Olympics are starting on February 3rd for us in the U.S. We're super excited. So aerial skiing, we're going to see you flying through the air. You're doing, I'm, I think, I would call them flips and spins and twirls. I'm not sure exactly what the technical term is, but that's what we're going to say when we're watching. Um, I can't even imagine, like, what kind of courage that must take. So where do you find the courage to make those jumps? And when you fall, how do you convince yourself to get back up? You're exactly right. It's flips and twists. So we are doing multiple flips and twists and try to land on our feet. And there is a lot of fear involved in the sport. You know, it can be scary sometimes, especially when we're learning new tricks or we're on a new site or the weather's a little uneasy or, or nerve wracking. And so there are a lot of challenges and obstacles to overcome in the sport. And especially from the mental side of things, um, the entire sport and our jump only lasts a couple seconds. And so when we're at the top, we have to be very focused and ready to go in that exact moment to do what we need to do to get on top of that podium. So we train for hours and hours and do hundreds and hundreds of jumps just for a couple seconds of competition. And so there's a lot of pressure and nerves involved in that. And so it's really important for us to be able to learn how to cope with that and to calm ourselves down. So for me at the top of the hill, visualization is really important. So I think like literally, through the jump in my head before I go exactly what I want to do. I do the arm movements and then deep breathing is really important for me at the top of the hill. I take three deep breaths as I am in the gate, ready to hop turn to calm myself down. And then I turn my skis and I do a jump, get to feel the feeling of flying through the air and then landing the jump is just the best feeling in the world. But of course, it's not always a perfect landing. There are going to be times where you crash and you fall and sometimes it hurts and you need to get back up. And um, a lot of times we have to get back up to the top of the hill to do another jump. And I think a big part of this is just taking each jump at a time, you know, and even if it's in training, taking it day by day, jump by jump, second by second, you know, it's really important to just be present in the moment and not stress too much about what has happened or what could happen and just be focused in the moment. It's pretty cool. You know, I always said growing up, if I had a superpower, it would be to fly. And now I literally get to get pretty cl darn close to that. Oh my gosh. I, I would, I would probably need to be on like a harness to try it if I'm being honest, but I am Wow, I cannot wait to see you compete. This will be so exciting. Um, okay, so your life is absolutely full of adventure, which brings us right back to our cookie season for 2022, which is um, all about adventure. These girls are going to climb with courage. They're going to reach new heights. They're going to, they're not going to do aerial skiing with maybe with their cookie money. Who knows? Um, so you've like you've done so many different things. You've walked the red carpet in gowns in New York. You've seen the Northern Lights in Finland. You've reeled in a 110 pound halibut. Like what? Crazy. Um, in Alaska, had to add that. So I have two questions. What has been your favorite adventure so far? And what is your next adventure on the horizon? Oh my, my favorite adventure. That is so tough. Yeah. Can you name uh, one? <laughs> the... Inca Trail to Machu Picchu Marathon was definitely pretty amazing. It was the toughest marathon in the world. And we ran this course on what normally takes people several days to walk. And I did it in nine hours and I was the top female finisher. And it was just incredible getting to see the Andes Mountains and, and learn about the culture in Peru. Um, so that one was pretty neat. One of the passes that we actually in the mountains that we had to go up and down the other side of was called dead woman's pass and so it went up to fourteen thousand feet and it literally made it the toughest marathon in the world but wow. it was all worth it in the end and we got to you know finish at the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu and see 
the llamas just wandering through Machu Picchu. So that was definitely a really cool marathon. They all had their unique things, but that one was pretty special. And then on the horizon, I think right now I'm just looking forward to the Olympics and getting to be there. Obviously, it's going to be very different this year um, with COVID and everything. It's not going to be a normal Olympic experience. And so um, that part is going to be different, but it still will be so excited. I'm so excited to be out there and, you know, get to this world stage and get to compete there. Yay! Oh, my gosh. Incredible. And you know what? We'll just put on for uh, on your calendar. We'll put on the 2026 Olympics as well. So there you go. You'll have <laughs> another another adventure to look forward to too. Absolutely. Um, this is amazing. Thank you so so much for joining us. We are so excited to have you help us get ready for our, our cookie season and help us tackle these new adventures. So thank you so much for helping us. And before you go. I know you have um, a special clue that you want to share with us for our girls that are tuning in. So girls, get out your sheet so you can write down what Winter is about to tell you. So this is the clue right here. What are these? I use them on my feet every time I get ready to go off the jump. Perfect. So what letter are we looking for with that clue, Girl Scouts? Write down what you think it is on your sheet and we'll be all set. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Winter. We cannot wait to see you compete at Beijing 2022. And we will uh, see you very soon. And where can everyone find you? You can find me on Instagram at Winter Vanecki, And then my website is just wintervanecki.com. So it's W-I-N-T-E-R and then V-I-N-E-C-K-I. Perfect. Thanks, Winter. Thank you.